Hey, welcome or well, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. However, what I do know is that um, I made a bit of a pain somnia purchase. <clears throat> so, if you want to find out just exactly what I ordered at stupid o'clock in the morning. That's my front door. Wait there. Actually, let's just just watch the film. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I will no doubt have shown you these in the intro. Pain somnia purchase. What can I say? <clears throat> so I caved and bought the Revolution Precious Stone Amethyst palette which looks like this I'm trying to show you without dazzling I hate when they put reflective packaging here but this one here can you see it's misspelled I've missed the U out of turquoise I did tag them about that on um, Insta got a reply and I actually said I bet they're not going to bother to reply because I've tagged them twice before once for the union flag being wrong and once for a misspelling in another palette they actually answered me on this one and said oh we do allow our people to, um, what is it to be human and make mistakes turquoise really there are very, very few words in the English language that has a Q that is not followed by a U. <clears throat> um, I actually spent enough in this haul to get there free. You are the revolution. Uh, palette. Which looks like this. Reminds me quite a bit of the Anastasia Sultry palette but with a pop of gold to make it interesting. So, I should be having a play with that at some point. I picked up the... <clears throat> sorry, I think I'm coming down with a cold, which is not good when you've got a chatty channel. This is the Patricia Bright um, Moonlight Glow face palette. nice little tin and looks like this I also picked up uh, one of their reloaded highlighters in just my type because I get the feeling the one in the Patricia bright one won't be bright enough for my liking because you know what I'm like uh, I've grabbed another one of those little ultra pointed crease eyeshadow brushes which you would have seen me mention in one of my previous films if I can get this damn thing open, there we go that it says revolution on it but doesn't tell you the name of it it's not what I would call a pointed crease to me a pointed crease would be something more like this that comes up to a point or uh, You know, something like this. But, okay. You do you, Revolution. You do you. So I've got another little mini brush. I don't think I'm using that one today, so I'll stick that over there. And I picked up... They've, they've started... I Heart Revolution have started to do Eau de Parfum. Um, 
in the shape of their chocolate bars and this one is called Black Velvet which actually is a song that I sing at karaoke but also from the description of it it sounded the nicest one to me and uh, it actually smells very much like an agent provocateur perfume that I have so that can be my sort of cheap everyday perfume so I can save my expensive ones for nights out etc I don't feel me if I've not got perfume on but this one's actually quite nice it's vegan, cruelty free the fragrance notes if you are interested because it does tell you on the back of the box Top notes, raspberry, pomegranate, plum and watermelon. Middle, lily of the valley, jasmine, rose, pink pepper and clove. And the bottom notes, Virginia cedar, patchouli and amber. So, there we go. Uh, let me put uh, this somewhere out of the way over there. Because I want to go in with this baby today. Now, I haven't even swatched this yet. Um, you've got, I'm trying to do this again without dazzling you. You've got like a mainly mattes here, but you have got a matte with shimmer in it there and a shimmer pigment there. Again, these are mainly mattes. These three have got shimmer pigment in them, but. Uh, and then obviously you've got those ones in the middle which I'm guessing are your your fancy sparkly they feel wet shades, I mean I've barely touched my finger into those you can see I've still got pigment on my fingers and yeah so those are obviously your pow 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 shades so, just clean my fingers off. Now, um, this is still a teaching channel. My pain levels don't allow me to blend very quickly. Uh, but I also want beginners to be able to follow this. I want someone who's never picked up a brush before to be able to pick up a brush and follow me step by step. So I zoom in close and I do the eyes quite slowly so that you can follow on in real time. If this is going too slow for you, there is a speed widget up there, feel free to speed me up, it's really not an issue. It's more important for me that beginners can follow on. If you need to speed me up to get through me because you've not got a lot of time, that's, yeah, it's fine, I really don't mind. Um, I am going to zoom you in, I'm going to talk you through the difference between deep set eyes and hooded eyes, give you a workaround for both, and then I'm going to hit in with some of that palette. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I have used my usual antiperspirant primer, that's a little bit too close Angie. Use my usual antiperspirant primer. More details on this, I've got a film <coughs> listed below. And on my eyes is my usual Crow and Pebble. I bought both of these items myself. I have not been sent anything for free, but I do have a discount code with Crow and Pebble. This is in shade. <coughs> Orange, so they can read it. Blank page cotton. <clears throat> this is actually the second one that I'm going through, and you can see the dip in that already. I've had to order myself another one because I did not want to run out of this. I love this. Um, <clears throat> it's by far the best eyeshadow palette I've used, uh, eyeshadow primer I've used, because it goes on dry, which means you don't have to set it, which means you don't have to make that choice between being able to blend on it straight away or not get the full colour pigment. So, 
Uh, for those of you who know what I'm about to say about eye shapes, feel free to fast forward until you see me wave a brush at you with some pigment on it. Right. I've actually got deep set eyes, but I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colours onto the upper lid. If I am cutting the crease, um, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket line. And when I'm wearing glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through the middle. But I don't have hooded eyes. When I relax my brows and look forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner, so I don't have hooded eyes. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Um, I'll demonstrate on this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still on camera. If I cover my visible mobile lid, this side, and then relax my eye, you can see I've got as much lid, if not more, that tucks back away out of sight. And then if I cover the static upper lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid there that tucks back away as well. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lid gets, and it's why so many people with deep set eyes are mistakenly told or believe they have hooded lids. Right, the workaround. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the space between the new crease and the brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary take the colour right up to the brow. If you have deep set eyes like myself, what we have to do when we're putting a colour through the crease is just to sit back, relax our brows and just make sure we pulled it up far enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different eyes. Okay. Uh, I am going to use this Jeffrey Morphe JS8 brush. It is clean, it's just stained, it needs its deep clean. And I am going to start off by going into Tawny. Um, you know what, for, an, for a palette called Amethyst, there are not that many. There are, Matte purples, there's one and it's a deep purple, which is ridiculous. Uh, these are quite dusty, so okay. You see, this is quite a taupey shade, and I'm going to start off up here. Tiny little circular movements. I'm holding the brush right at the end. Tiny little, I have got a spot here, which will probably impede the blending, but there we go. Circular movements like this across to the middle, a bit of a bounce when I get to the middle, and then reverse the direction to come back out again. And the reason I do that is because I'm 45, I've lost 14 stone, which is just under 200 pounds, and the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know 20 year olds who are stick thin that have loose eyelids. And by doing this, you're very gently moving the skin around so you don't get any tiger striping or barcoding. Now, here, you can see the super deep creases I've got here. I do have to stretch that lid out because uh, it was the eye that was pulled around when I was a kid. And when I'm saying a kid, I'm talking 40 years ago. I'm talking a five-year-old. Um, and it's caused deep creasing where they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly with that eye. So be delicate with your eyes because once you get deep creasing, trust me, you're not going to want it. Okay, that actually blended really nicely. And it's one of the ones that has actually got pigment straight away. A lot of the revolution shades um, are the kind of shade that need two or three coats to build up. But they do that deliberately so that if you're a complete beginner you don't suddenly get freaked out by suddenly seeing now blend that out kind of thing. Um, 
I know a lot of people moaned that the um, the Emily Edits palette, the wants and the needs, um, the Emily Noel ones that they did, they were moaning that they were needed a lot of building up. But um, although I've not had either of those palettes, I do remember watching Emily's reveal video for them. Um, and she said that she wanted them like that so that you had the choice of using them very, very lightly or building them up. I'm just sitting back and checking that both eyes look the same because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. We're not Jimmy Chuck here, we don't use Photoshop. Uh, so just, it's, it's a good idea just to stop and make sure that the shapes look the same both sides. Okay, so I'm going to use the same brush. I'm not going to clean it off because I'm just going to go in with a darker version of what I've already used. And I'm going to go in with one that they call Maroon. Now, Maroon to me is a deep red. Their Maroon is a... Brownie grey. But they spelt turquoise wrong, so why am I surprised? Right, I'm going to go in with this one just a little bit lower and blend that together. Ah, now I'm blending it on my eye. You can actually see a hint of purple underneath all of that, but it is not obvious from, although in screen it does look a little bit purpley, like it does look like a purpley grey, whereas in real life it actually looks like a brown grey. So, just doing the same thing here, just a little bit lower down on the eye. I do struggle here and here both sides anyway, because I have dry patches. Um, but as you can see it's blending out fine over here, so the issue here is literally just where I've got a dry patch on my eyelid there. I keep getting wafts of that perfume. I don't normally put perfume until after I've uh, done my makeup. It's quite a nice perfume. Quite glad I got it now. Same thing this side. So how's your day been? What's it been like? Has it been a good one? If it wasn't a good one, I hope tomorrow is better. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it's going to be a good one for you. Hubby's got a fun day today. He's got his refresher course on his forklift training. He's got, uh, got a counterbalance today and he's got the reach in two days time. But he's been driving forklifts since he was 17, so, ooh, nearly half his life, wow. Um, yes, my hubby's 11 years younger than me. He's my toy boy. What can I say? So, he's got that today, which will be fun. He said he always likes doing those because they're quite easy days for him because he hasn't got to actually unload anything. He's just got to demonstrate that he knows how to. So. And it also brings him up to date with any new legislation that's come in in the last, I think it's every two years they have to do it, maybe two or three years. So it just brings him up to date with any legislation that he may not be aware of yet. Because, you know, I mean, let's be honest, when did you last look at the highway code if you, if you know how to drive in the UK? How long ago did you pass your test and when did you last look at the highway code to see if there's any changes? I must admit I have been because um, Hobby's going to be learning how to drive in the new year. 
because there's times that I'm in too much pain and can't drive. And then we're stuck taking taxis and stuff. Right, I'm just using, I'm just cleaning this shh rude. Just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches, they're far too rough on the brushes, especially if your brush is um, natural hair. I mean the ones I'm using today are synthetic, but if you're using a natural hair brush, for goodness sake, please don't use a colour switch, they're so rough on them. Um, you're much better off using a washcloth or a microfiber cloth, an old towel, anything like that. Right. I am going to go in to... I'm going to go into Regal, which is um, like an indigo colour, sort of like a deep deep blue purple because purples and blues are the most difficult colours to create in terms of matte so I want to see how well this actually performs so I'm going to do tiny 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 little circles right the way through the crease all the way across and back again Make sure I pull that up high enough, yep. It's a little bit um a little bit patchy just here. But then again that could just be the dry patch that I've got there. Let's see how it blends out across the eye. Because we don't want to take this too high up the eye, what we're doing here. Um, if you've had to move your crease up by putting a deeper colour where the crease should be, anything deep recedes or goes back, anything light comes forward. So by putting a deeper colour through the crease or on your fake crease, it will give the illusion from a distance that you have actually got a deeper section of eye just there. Actually that's not too bad. I mean, I've used better, obviously, but I've also used a lot, lot worse. I'm just going to pop some of this on the outer, outer edge of my mobile lid to increase the definition here. Can you see the difference now? This eye has a lot more definition than this one does. Same thing this side. I can show you a bit easier this side because obviously I can close this eye. And I can show you what I mean then about the tiger striping as well. Because um, one of the things that I do struggle, especially on the, the mobile lip when I'm doing that part of the eye, is um, I have to stretch the lid out otherwise the pigment just packs loosely into the creasing rather than being blended out smoothly um, and then I end up with can you see the tiger striping there? I end up with pigment coming down my face throughout the day as it sort of as I move my eye and you can see I'm only pulling this lid out as far as I absolutely have to I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll And as soon as it's blended, I'm letting go. And add a little bit of depth on the outer corner. There. Quite like that. That blended out much better than I was expecting it to, actually. There we go, right, clean that brush off. Now this is again a Jeffrey Morphe, but it wasn't part of either of the sets. This was sold separately. It's one of the lip brushes and it's JS24. 
And I love this because it's great for getting right into the corner there. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. You will kill the pigment. Where the heck is my... Where is this going over? Hello. Right. Once I've loaded pigment onto the brush, I'll be wetting it with this. You can use any spray you like. You can use a priming spray like I am. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus or Mary Badescu. You can use a setting spray, a finishing spray. You can just use clean water out of a tap. <clears throat> um, but just don't go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush, please. Right. I'm going to go into a mauve, or mauve as the Americans would say. Okay, these are, I, I thought they felt like this. These have got a lot of oils in them. So the minute you touch them <clears throat> with a brush, they look like they're going to hard pan. But I'm actually rubbing over the area where it's gone hard pan and I am still able to pick up pigment on the brush. Um, can you see what I mean there about how it's gone hard pan or shiny across that bit? Shouldn't need to wet this. The reason I'm going to is because <clears throat> as well as increasing the shine it will actually stop a lot of the fallout. Right, always dry your ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is put it in the crease of your knuckles and spin the brush around. Now for this eye I'm going to use a little mirror and look down into it so you can see what I'm doing. Where I obviously can't close it. So I'm going to use this on the inner corner. I don't, first time I use a palette, I don't tend to do a cut crease because I want to see how much opacity the shimmers actually have. This one's not bad. I mean, it's covering the the deeper mat that I used. It's actually quite pretty. I'm just going to dry the brush off so that I'm not going back in with a wet brush. And I'm going to go into mauve again. And again, I'm just going <coughs> to wipe my brush over the shiny side. And again, it has let me pick up pigment. Wet the brush. <clears throat> I'm so sorry about all this clearing of my throat. Right, I'm going to have to stretch this out a little bit as I discussed earlier. But you can see it does actually cover the deeper matte shadow. Okay. Clean the brush off. And then I think I'm going to go into... What are the other two like? Oh, I like that one. So I'm going to go into that one. That one's called Luster. Again, these are very, very, they've obviously got a lot of oils in them because again it's going hard pan but also it's also very, very crumbly so don't push too hard in there with the brush because you will dislodge some of the surface pigment uh, and have it crumble everywhere and then that's just a waste of pigment. 
clean the film, put that in its hair off the brush, there we go. And then I'm going to use this one to join the lighter shade to the deeper outer third that I did earlier. This is a really, really pretty colour. And I'm just going to lightly drag some of the lighter colour across onto this deeper one, just to soften where the two colours meet. And then dry the brush off and go back into it to do the other eye. It's really weird the weather today. It's keeps coming over overcast and then brightening up again and then coming overcast and brightening up again. And it's like, please will you make up your mind? Come on now. Yeah, these are super, super, the middle shades, super, super oily as you can see. <clears throat> I mean, that's a good thing. It gives them a lot of shine. But... I do question whether, as you continue to use it, whether we're going to get any issues as we get further through the shadow as to whether we'll still be able to pick up pigment off of it or not. But I won't be able to tell that for quite a few months until I've worked through the pigments a bit. So, same thing this side. Drag the lighter shade across onto the darker one, just to blend where they meet. I actually really like that. I like that a lot. Shh. Rude. Rude, 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 rude. Go away, people. Right. Uh, I'm going to pause you now while I go and put some foundation and stuff on. And then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, for you, my darlings, there will be no delay at all. For me, well, I'm going to have to wait until the next time I press record to continue chatting with you. So, see you right now. Do I am back. And it suddenly got very overcast. And, um, hmm. I think I might be about to lose the lighting. This is ridiculous. It's not even... It's not even half twelve in the afternoon yet. I am not pulling curtains and putting lights on yet. <sighs> right. <clears throat> um, I did use the Patricia Bright bronzer and blush. Not bad. prefer my butter bronzer and... Um, the blush was okay. It's a really nice apricot blush that would suit most skin tones. Right, I'm going back in with this flat top brush. And I'm going to go into... I think I'll go back into Regal, which is the deeper colour that I put through the crease. I'm just going to run this along of the lower lash line, like so. I always flinch this side because the number of times I've poked myself in the eye because uh, obviously I've got no peripheral vision this side and the viewfinder is quite a long way off. So I'm kind of relying on muscle memory. And uh, let's just say it's, it's been known to let me down in the past. Okay. And now this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, which I love because... Focus. Hello. Thank you. It's flat topped, but it's chunky. Oh, my white balance has just gone bizarre. Okay. Is that because I did that? Maybe. I don't know. Right. 
I'm going to go into that maroon shade that I used before. And I'm just going to use that to gently buff out the lower lash line. On both sides, obviously. I've not done um, liner because my eyes are very watery today. My fibro is really playing up. So I didn't think that was a very wise idea. Alright, now. This is quite literally um, a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago now. So I'm going to try this Patricia Bright highlighter. I don't think it's going to be bright enough for what I want. Yeah, it's really not. This is a, a way more subtle highlight. So let's try the Revolution Highlighter Reloaded in just my type. See if that will give me more of a... I must admit, I do like this sort of rippled finish they've done. Ah, oh, see, now the sunlight's come back out again. quite like that actually. But I'm going to go into this palette for the inner corner because there is a silver in here called Empress. It's not the middle row, it's one of the satins. I'm going to try this just in here and bring it along to meet Look at that, isn't that pretty? That's nice. Oh, hello Daylight, you're back again. I'm going to have great fun trying to sort the lighting out with this, aren't I? That's literally the only changes I make to my film, is, is try and make sure that the the brightness level stays the same all the way through. I don't always manage it because if I feel it's changing the colour of this then I will just stop and go nope. Right, I'm going to pause you one last time while I bung some more of this highlighter all over my face, put a mascara on, choose a lipstick, do something with the still wet hair and I'll be back with my final look. Again, no delay for you. Right, I am back. Hair is still wet, but I like my hair to dry naturally. I don't like using heat on it, unless I have to. So, we're just going to have to put up with that. Uh, the lipstick is one of my Hourglass Confession lipsticks in shade my one desire. Obviously I used this highlighter. It's okay but it's it's not not blinding. It's not one I'd necessarily pick up again to use. Uh, mascara is the uh, blowout cannabis sativa mascara. It's got a really really big brush on that so if you've got tiny eyes you might struggle. Um, I did use my Hourglass Ambient um, Finishing Powder in dim light um, over my face to give me a bit of life back because I felt that I felt that the the bronzer and the blush from this were very 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 matte 
Um, and I've got oily combo skin so my T-zone gets oily but my cheeks are quite dry and it was really making my cheeks look dusty and powdery and like a 90 year old which is why I went over them with that hourglass powder because it just kind of brings your skin back to looking like skin and of course I went over with uh, my Slay All Day I'm nearly out of this one but I have got some more I had an order come through from uh, Gerard today as it happens um, but this was the Gerard stuff is not stuff that I had to pay for this was um, every so often they'll give you a store credit so you can buy new bits um, and I got a couple of lip glosses, a lipstick and restocked on loads of setting spray because if there's one thing I cannot be without now it's my Slay All Days um, I do have a discount code for Gerard. obviously I earn from it because every, every so often I get a store credit um, but the best setting spray in terms of keeping my makeup on all day is the she said I've got one down here got a little mini one, little handbag size the Urban Decay All Nighter but when I use the All Nighter I end up with super super dried out skin um, it must have a really really high alcohol content because um, if, I'm, if I've got somewhere to go to where I know I'm not going to be able to touch my makeup up all day and it's a hot day so I'm going to be sweating I'll normally use the all nighter first but then I'll go over it with the slay all day because the slay all day the all nighter gives me about an extra half an hour over this but that's simply because the high alcohol content but it really dries my skin out and I really suffer for it for the next two or three days this slay all day works brilliantly it melts all the powders in together so that you don't look dusty you don't look clunky um, and they've got a range of different scents if you have sensitive eyes like I do the jasmine is a little bit strong um, I find that one can actually make my eyes water a little bit um, so I don't tend to get the jasmine one Coconut, I've used absolutely fine. Peach, I've used fine. Cucumber, I love. Um, I've got rose and I've got lavender to try. I haven't tried watermelon yet either. Um, there we go. But, talking about the items from today. Uh, eyeshadow palette. It's produced an okay look, I like it. Um, I need to play with it a bit more before I decide how much I like it the spelling mistake does annoy me I know that's stupid but little things like that really bug the hell out of me uh, but if I like the palette enough I'll be able to work past that if not next time I do a declutter you, you'll probably be seeing it going into the maybe or the get rid of pile um, I'm planning on doing a this is my makeup collection in the new year um, and I'll probably do a declutter at that point because I have been sorting my makeup out now so the first few drawers that you'll see will be I'm not getting rid of this and I'm not getting rid of this and, and it's going to be the last few drawers that will be declutters if there are any going to be happening and I do need to, to hone my collection down because it's got to the stage now where I've got so many palettes that some of them are just not going to get used because I'm going to give preference to excuse my throat you know I'm going to give preference to the palettes that I prefer so I may as well get rid of the ones that are still in good nick pass them on to friends, pass them on to family um, so that they can at least be used and not be wasted so I should I palette the uh, amethyst one gemstone one so far I like but I have only used one two three four five six of the shades out of it so I need to use a few more of those shimmers uh, a few more of those mattes and see how they blend out um, but 
I actually quite like the look that I've done today. Obviously, um, I haven't touched this palette yet. That will appear in a future film. Um, I really like that perfume. I can still keep smelling it. This set, it's okay, but I'm probably not going to reach for it over the other ones that I've got here. I mean, in terms of bronzers recently, I've been using my Butter Bronzer. Um, I've been using my Winky Lux Latte Bronzer and I've been using my Too Faced Pineapple Sun Bronzer. Those are the three that I'm drawn to repeatedly at the moment. In terms of blush, um, I tend to be going for my Anastasia one. This is Berry Adore. Um, or I'll go for this one, the Serafina blush from Juvia's. Um, or one of these two, the L'Oreal Life's a Peach. Or, and actually this is the Reloaded one as well because this has got the, the mixed, the sort of the sort of roughly finish to it as well. And this is in Violet Love. So those are the those are the ones that I'm sort of using at the moment. If I want a no makeup makeup day, I actually use this butter blush, which on me is this is shade. What is this? Natural Glow. For me, this is more of a um, kind of glowing from within highlight than a blush. It's more of a blush topper. So, and the highlight is nowhere near bright enough for me at all. If I want a subtle highlight, I'll either use that butter bronzer or I've got an hourglass euphoric strobe light one, which I'd use instead. Um, and as I said, the bronze and the blush did leave my cheeks looking very powdery, very dry. So I'm probably going to pass this on to someone who's got slightly oilier skin than me, um, who who probably find this works much much better for them. Literally, I've used it once. It, I know I'm going to be decluttering this one. Um, this highlight, it's okay, but again, it's it's not the kind of blinding highlight that I like. Let me grab. Let me grab water brat by Fenty and just show you I mean this one's got glitter in it so it's possibly not the best option to show you but if I put this on can you see how instantly that gives you way more glow way more reflect than this side does And to me, that's what I'm looking for in a highlight. So I'll probably be passing that one on as well. Obviously the brush I haven't used yet, but I have got another one just like it that I have used and I do like this. This is, it is a very, very soft brush. Um, one of the things, if you've got fibro, you'll know this, your skin textures and everything are... <sighs> There's a lot of brushes that I used to use that I can't anymore because they hurt my skin. Um, most of my natural hair brushes I've had to stop using because they do tend to be more scratchy than synthetics. So, all in all, out of that lot, uh, perfumes are winner winner chicken dinner and the purple palette is okay at the moment. I need to use more shades to determine whether I definitely like it or not. The brush, I know that's good. So it really I've only got two duds so far and that's the Patricia Bright set and this is the shade Moonlight Glow. They have got a deeper one if you are a deeper skin tone. 
um, and this re highlighter reloaded in just my type it's just not sparkly enough for me so there we go that's my thoughts so far um, I hope you've enjoyed I've got powder all down in front of me thank goodness that's out of camera range I always do that with my powder honestly uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed this film if you've made it this far with my blithering I'm guessing you must have liked something about it um, if you are a regular, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people. It's so frustrating. Um, it's it's demoralising as well. You know, I'm nowhere near a thousand. I've literally just dropped under the four thousand. I've been like on four thousand watch hours for ages. Um, but I still couldn't be monetized until I hit a thousand subs and I'm still nowhere near that so I'm nowhere near going to be monetized and I've now dropped under the 4,000 watch hours as well so I don't know what YouTube are up to at the moment but it's very frustrating but if this is your first time here hi, hello, welcome I'm not always this blethery sometimes I'm better, sometimes I'm worse uh, but if you've made it this far I'm guessing you kind of like what you've seen if you're not sure, I've got a lot of other films you can watch, but if you are sure, the subscribe button's just, just down there. It's bright red, you can't miss it. And at the moment, until YouTube changed their mind, it's still free. And I'd love for you to join my 4F family. We are the nicest group of people on YouTube. Right. All that remains for me to say, my darlings, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.